guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to today's video where I'm going to show you the basics of how to set up a rat cage. So the cage I use with my rats is called the Pet Planet Rat and Ferret Cage. I do have a video where I review this cage on my channel which I'll leave linked in the description. Right now temporarily I do have this split into two different sections. This is just to have the babies in the top until they can be introduced to my adult rats down below. But again this is only temporary. Having the cage split into two sections like this is handy for filming this video though, just to condense everything down and show you on a smaller scale how to set up a rat cage. But I do have a few other videos on my channel showing you guys this cage as a big active layout, which is my preferred method of setting up a cage for rats, and I'll also leave those videos linked in the description too. So obviously the first thing you'll need when it comes to setting up a rat cage is the cage itself and I do have a whole separate video where I talk you guys through cage recommendations. Obviously this is the cage that I use but there's many good cages on the market so I'll leave that video linked in the description too. So obviously the first thing you'll need to put into the rat cage is some bedding. I really do recommend using a loose bedding and not anything like fleece or other fabric materials because not only are these not going to be good for odour control and preventing respiratory infections, but it doesn't provide your rats with any enrichment at all. They really do benefit from having bedding to dig around in and forage, so I really don't recommend using any other beddings like fleece or any materials in the cage. So it's very likely if you have a rat cage like mine, the base they come with is not very deep and this can be really annoying when you're trying to add a deep layer of bedding for them to dig in. So I do recommend going out and buying some sort of storage tub that fits the base of the cage or you can also build a perspex tray like I've done and this is really good at giving them a deep layer of bedding. So obviously as I'm only doing this split cage on a temporary basis, I don't have a second perspex tray to go in the top, so I can't add too much bedding to show you in this video, but as you can see I do have the perspex tray down below with my other rats, and I do really recommend doing something like this with your cage. So yeah, obviously the first thing you want to add into your cage is a deep layer of loose substrate. I recommend hemp, aspen, cardboard based beddings, paper based beddings, just try to avoid any beddings that aren't kiln dried or dust extracted, as these can be harmful to your rats respiratory systems. So the bedding I choose to use with my rats is a hemp based bedding, usually I use a brand called Orbios, but right now I'm also using a brand called Hemp Parade on the main section of the cage, and that's also working really well too. So you might also want to litter train your rats and have them go in a specific area in the cage just to make hygiene and cleaning them a bit easier. I do have a whole separate video on litter training rats, which I'll leave linked in the description, but you do want to try to have two separate beddings in the main cage compared to the litter tray. This just helps the rats have the distinction between the two areas and know which area they're supposed to go in. So I highly recommend not using the same bedding in the main cage compared to the litter tray. So for this you are going to want to use a paper based litter, whether this is aimed at cats or small animals. Make sure you're using a paper based litter and not regular cat litter. This is going to be really absorbent for their litter tray, but also a safe option for them. So this is what the litter tray looks like. I do prefer to use ones that are corner litter trays, just because rats tend to prefer going to the toilet in a corner. So this is the type of litter tray that I use. And when I do have the full cage, I do have two litter trays in the cage and I do place these underneath where they sleep. Rats tend to be quite lazy when it comes to going to the toilet. So placing them underneath their favorite hammock works really well because they just drop down and go to the toilet so you might have to play around with the placing and the positioning just to make sure they are using their litter trays as they're meant to. Next it's time to add in all of the toys and accessories into your rat's cage, starting with plenty of things for them to climb on. I really do believe in giving your rats an active layout and making the cage as active as possible and that's why normally you won't see many shelves or levels in my cage just to make sure my rats are being as active as they can. So providing your rats with plenty of things to climb on can be anything from DIYing something yourself. So I'm using this IKEA wine rack. You can also go out and buy specific toys for birds and small animals like ladders and bridges. These work really well for giving your rats something to climb on. I also recommend providing them with some ropes to climb on. I do recommend looking at either the bird section or the dog section. That's where you're more likely to find big, long, thick ropes. The small animal section does have quite small ropes, so going to those sections instead, you're likely to find cheaper, bigger ropes, and these you can just attach into the cage with clips or zip ties. That's another handy tip. Be prepared to buy lots and lots of zip ties. It makes attaching things in the cage so much easier. 
Again, continuing with the theme of giving your rats plenty of things to climb on, Bendy Bridges are like a staple in the small pet world, so make sure you pick a couple of them up as well. These also double up as a chew toy, as do the other wooden items, so giving your rats something to climb on, you're also providing them with things to chew on too. Again, another staple when it comes to running rats is this IKEA tie holder. Not only is this going to be something they can climb on, but also it's really good, especially if you have a very tall cage. Putting this across the middle of your cage, just in case your rats do fall from the top, this is going to act as a full breaker to catch them and make sure they don't go all the way from the top to the bottom. So you might notice that a lot of things in my rat cage are actually from Ikea. I do have a whole video where I went to Ikea and I showed you things you can use with your rats and I will leave that video linked in the description just in case you also have an Ikea near you and you want to pick some stuff up. So when it comes to attaching things within the rat cage you can either use shower curtain hooks or things like pear clips to attach hammocks and ropes within the cage. Next you are going to want to provide your rats with somewhere to sleep this can come in many forms, either as a plastic house on the floor, like this plastic one I sell in my store, Cheeky Self Promo, or there's also this one which I've zip tied to the side of the cage. This was originally a storage shelf from Ikea. I don't think they sell this anymore, so you probably won't be able to get this one, but I do like to zip tie this to the side of the cage, just to give them somewhere extra to sleep. There's also other options like Sputniks or Space Pods which you can attach to the top. Rats do tend to enjoy sleeping at the top of the cage or of course you can also provide them with hammocks. So hammocks come in many different forms and there's many different people out there making them and selling them. You can also try to make them yourself, that's perfectly acceptable. But the ones I'm using are a hammock set made by Dainty Paws and we do actually have a discount code you can use which is Emiology10 and this will get you 10% off your order. But I like to provide my rats with a couple of different hammock options in the cage just in case they want to sleep in a different hammock. We've got a flat hammock and also a double style hammock and I'm just attaching both of these into the cage with clips. Then you'll probably also want to give your rats different types of toys as forms of enrichment. These can come in so many different forms, either hanging wooden and rope toys, hanging loofah toys, chew toys on the floor like willow balls. I like to give my rats a variety of different types of toys and switch them up on a regular basis so they don't get bored. We also probably want to add some of those in too. Next you might want to add in a lava ledge into your rat's cage. Not only are these going to be good for your rats to climb on the bars, but also you can position these underneath their water bottle and in theory they should help to keep their nails down. Also you can provide your rats with these wooden perches or branches. These come in a couple of different forms. I have these wooden ones and also some blue ones and some green ones. These are really good because not only are they something they can climb on, but they also utilise a lot of the space in the cage that you might not be able to hang anything from. Having these doors at the front is really useful, but it does make hanging things a bit difficult. So these are really good for attaching to the doors and giving your rats not only something to climb on, but also something extra to chew on to. So personally, something I think is really important and probably one of the most important things to put into a rat cage is foraging toys. These are really important because rats are so highly intelligent. They can get bored quite easily. So providing them with different forms of enrichment, firstly with the bedding, but also in the toys, is really important for keeping their brains active. So there's many different foraging toys on the market. You could also just get creative and make some yourself using cardboard or toilet roll tubes. But also going to the bird section is great to find good foraging toys because again, parrots are also highly intelligent. Most good foraging toys will be found in the bird section and these are really good for using with your rats. So I do have a variety of different foraging toys and I do like to switch them up and make sure I'm not getting bored and getting used to one foraging toy. So every so often I will switch up which foraging toy I'm using with them. But they come in so many different forms. There's foraging wheels, foraging balls, or ones like this one, which is a bamboo foraging toy. I like to switch up which one I'm using and I recommend you do the same too. Then of course, you also need to provide your rats with a water source. I choose to use a combination of a water bottle and a water bowl, just in case either one stops working or they knock one over, but it's completely up to you which one you'd prefer to use, but I do use a combination of both. I do recommend though, if you are choosing to use just water bottles, make sure you've got a couple of them on the cage, just in case one of them stops working and to prevent them fighting over one water bottle. Although from experience, giving them a couple, they will still choose to fight over the same bottle. That's just how rats are. 
You won't be seeing me give my rats a food bowl because I don't believe in giving them their main food in a bowl. It's much more enriching to give it to them scatterfed in their bedding or hiding it in the foraging toys is a much better option than giving it to them in a bowl. So if you do currently feed your rats using a food bowl, I really highly recommend looking into other options. Just to give your rats as much enrichment in their daily life as possible, food is one of the best ways to do that so please look into other options when it comes to feeding them. So that is pretty much it, so then of course it's time to add in your rats, and here's my 14 week old rats, Twix and Whisper, going into their new cage for the first time. So that is pretty much the basics when it comes to setting up a rat cage. There's nothing better than making up a new cage for your rats and then watching them explore it for the first time. So I hope you enjoy these clips of Whisper and Twix exploring going into the big cage for the first time. So if you take anything away from this video, it's that enrichment is a key factor to a rat's cage. It doesn't really matter how the rat cage looks. Enrichment is one of the most important factors when it comes to a rat's cage because they are so highly intelligent. I do also like to give my rats a dig box. I have a couple of other videos where I feature my dig box. As this cage is split, I can't fit the dig box in there. But that's also a really great way of giving them enrichment too. So yeah, if you can, please look at other ways to give your rats more enrichment in their cage. They spend the majority of their time in the cage, so making sure it's really enriching for them is so important, whether that's with foraging toys, or giving them a loose substrate, or scatter feeding them. Just try different things with your rats, just to make sure their lives are as interesting as possible. So I hope this was helpful if you're looking at setting up a rat cage for the first time, or you're looking at other ways to make your cage a bit more interesting. I do have a series on my channel where I react to people's rat cages, and give suggestions for things to add or take out, that might be helpful to you if you're looking to improve your rat cage, some of the tips might also apply to your cage too. But that is it for today's video, thank you so much for watching, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys!